हेलो मेरे स्टूडेंट्स वंस अगेन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू योर हिस्ट्री ऑनलाइन क्लास सो अगेन इन टूडेज ऑनलाइन क्लास विल बी मूविंग टूवर्ड्स योर वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री विथ चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेल्व दैट इज हराइस ऑफ फैसिजम अगेन विद अ न्यू टॉपिक नोन एज नैजिज्म एंड द सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर फ्रॉम द ईयर ऑफ नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी नाइन टिल नाइनटीन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फाइव सो इफ यू टॉक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिगार्डिंग फैसिजम सो फैसिजम वॉज वन ऑफ द मेन political power that existed in italy during the second world war and if we talk about the nazism even it was a political party or like it was a propaganda which existed in germany country that means both the countries under the european nation and talking about the second world war how the second world war started from 1939 especially on 1st of september finally after germany invading a small european country known as Poland so let's start the class so first topic will focus that is on causes why we talk about the second world war or talking about the fascism and nazism what were exactly the main causes that ultimately led to the rise of second world war in 1939 so first we see the point that is treaty of versailles so treaty of versailles was one of the main treaty which was signed between germany the defeated country in the first world war and with all the four super power france great britain usa and russia so when germany was treated in a humiliation way lots of rectification lots of terms and condition a humiliation pact was signed known as treaty of versailles on 20th of june 1919 then we see that how this was one of the major topic that made germany to go against all the superpowers and we see the rise of second world war in 1939 so second point we see that is known as the impact of first world war so when we to talk about the first world war or world war 1 we exactly see the year a period 1914 till 1918 so within this 4 to 5 years of first world war there was a war between central powers and the allied powers though allied powers they got victory over the central powers but still we see the impact lots of arms ammunition destruction and even usa used for the first time highly technological weapons which made allied powers to get victory over the central powers so even we see the impact of world war 1 next third point we talk that defeat of central powers so central powers consisted mainly of country like bulgaria the main country germany and small small european nation so after they got defeat in the first world war and how they had to face a humiliation a discrimination over all the super powers then that also made the major causes to go for the eruption of second world war and the fourth point and the very important point that is known as aggression of three nations under this three nation we talk about the two european nation that is italy and germany and one asian country that is japan so why italy we talk aggression because during the first world war if you have seen the video of the first world war there i have told you regarding that how italy were made to sign a peace treaty the london treaty in 1915 and they were been forced to stay as neutral during the first world war at least stayed neutral but after the end of first world war whatever the promises whatever the fulfillment that these are the parts or the territories that will be given to italy by the great britain that was never fulfilled and in that rage of anger there was a aggression by italy and second talking about the germany they had already got defeat in the first world war so how to avenge how to get revenge over all those kinds of powerful nation or the super power nations those who made them defeat in the first world war and in order to take that revenge they made a aggression over the other four countries and second world war started and talking about the japan so even japan and usa were having a very good relation during those era but ultimately when their import and export business they have been having a trading business stock so finally we see that even it, japan wanting to make their country a self sufficient nation militarism nation and overall one of the great powerful nation 
or strong nation under the Asian continent. In that phase also, Japan thought of shaking hands with Italy and Japan. So Italy and Germany, which is also known as Rome, Tokyo, Berlin Pact, which was signed in 1937. And the next topic will focus that is known as rise of fascism. So fascism already I have told you that it was a main political party which existed in Italy country. So we see the fascism rise from the year of 1922 till 1939. And in order to take this political power to a very high peak, we see one of the great dictator, leader, famous personality known as Benigno Mussolini from Italy country and he made several changes in his nation so that even the Italian citizens as well as whatever they were having their aims, objectives or their programs that could be really successful. And Benigno Mussolini after getting a leadership, he wanting to make lots of Italy a self-sufficient nation at the same time what kind of changes he wanted to make. The first step he took in order to make his nation a powerful nation that was Italian fascist party. So he founded this fascist party in the year of 1919, soon after the end of First World War. And then we see that when Benito Mussolini was going to a very high level, all his popularity, he was a very famous like a dictator, leader and we see that King Victor Emmanuel of Italy made this Mussolini as the Prime Minister. So after making him Prime Minister, so lots of responsibility, lots of work was on his shoulder. So how to make Italy a self-sufficient nation as it comes under the domestic policies at the same time whatever the tactics, whatever the role that he played in order to make Italy a self-sufficient nation, he gave all his contributing part, all his efforts and finally we see that Benito Mussolini is regarded as one of the great leader, dictator who later on shook hand with Germany as well as Japan in the Rome, Tokyo, Berlin axis in 1937. So this was a short description, the idea about the fascism. Next we'll focus that is known as rise of Nazism. So similar to fascism, one more new political party that originated in Germany country from the year of 1933 till 1939. Why 39? Because 1939 was the year when the Second World War took place between Allied powers and the Axis power. So under the Nazism, we talk about one of the great dictator the world has ever seen known as Adolf Hitler. He was born in Austria, but later on he was being brought up and he was one of the great leader of Germany known as Hitler. And after getting lots of popularity, lots of achievement from the citizens of Germany, he finally founded the Nazi party, also known as German Socialist Party in the year of 1933. So we see that how Hitler also wanting to make Germany a very powerful nation in all the fields, not only in military fields, but also in administrative fields, in the revenue fields, in military department and overall the development of the Germany as a nation. And we see that when he was arrested before this, when he was in jail, he wrote a particular book known as Man Camp, which was regarded as Nazi Bible. And in this book, Hitler has written about the political ideology. That means what can be the future of Germany? What are the points? What are the highlighting programs as well as the key points that can really make Germany a very powerful nation, but they should go in the flow of the programs and the propaganda that he wrote in the book known as Main Camp. Next we see that when he started getting lots of achievement, lots of popularity in his nation. So later on we see that how President Hindenburg of Germany during those time made Hitler as the Chancellor of Germany in 1933 and after getting the post as a Chancellor, lots of changes in his nation in all the department was been 
done that there should be only one political party known as Nazi party, one labor party known as German front. So all these kinds of rectification changes was been made by Hitler's leadership and a year later when Hindenburg died, he became the next president of Germany in 1934. President at the same time as a chancellor. So after getting lots of powers, he made Germany one of the powerful nation and we see that how he focused on the domestic policies to make Germany. That how Germany can be a totalitarian state focusing on the goal, destination, whatever the program that all the citizens at the same time leaders they have to go with the same flow. And next talking that there was no such kind of liberty or like a freedom to the citizens because he believed that country come first followed by citizens. And the last point that is known as how he also gave more importance or emphasis on the one party that was Nazi party and he formed a dictatorship in his nation as he was a leader, he was a dictator, he was a great personality for German citizens as well as for all the nations that they saw a new revolution, a new change in Germany country after Weimar Republic. They could not make very powerful and as they had to face a defeat in the First World War and after coming of Hitler, we see what kind of changes was been brought in Germany. So this was overall the first part video regarding causes for the Second World War, rise of fascism and the rise of Nazism. I hope you have understood the lecture, the points that I gave you in today's class. Till then, stay safe and thank you.